Sarah, hi. Hi, Jennifer. <laughs> For anybody who does not know you, who are you today? Um, today, and I really like that you asked this question of people. Um, today, I am a hummingbird mm. trying, not trying, but like letting myself emulate infinite joy. Oh. This comes from uh, my oracle cards that I have. And like, yes, like trying to emulate infinite joy and just like allow myself to be still in moments, okay. you know, when you're like yeah. feeding, I guess. Yeah. Do you pull them every day or is this just like something that no, you pull for? No, I mean, I'd say I do it like every, like once a week or twice a week or so, wow. but yeah. How long have and you been then doing I'll do that? Like, uh, probably like at least a year and okay. a half or so. Yeah. Have you felt like it's changed the way you've lived and like existed and seen the world? Yeah. I mean, I definitely think that like it gives you something to reflect on mm -hmm. and like sometimes it's way more um, pointed than you think it's going to be. Yeah. And so I kind of love like just getting this surprise of guidance or surprise of like, like I don't usually, I'm not usually like, hey, give me an answer about mm -hmm. this. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm just like, what is the guidance for this week? What is the guidance for this day? And like, how can I step into the world with some sort of renewed spark? I love that. What yeah. a cute thing. <laughs> no, I'm here for it. We had another episode. We've had two actually because I think I'm so drawn to this as a concept and I have not yeah. quite done it in terms of like tarot reading and manifesting and all of these yeah. things. But there really is so much truth about mind, body, like being in connection to something, being hyper aware of what you're putting out, what you're receiving, and just like zoning in and giving yourself purpose in that capacity. And so good on you for for being a hummingbird in this little moment. Yeah. I love it. Which is kind of also out of my shell a little bit. In what because way? Because I am very much like a Capricorn, like insular thinking, analytical person. Mm -hmm. And so being a hummingbird feels very like I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Eccentric yeah. in many ways. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I love it. I love that so much. Um, and I have you in here into this space because of your stage management expertise, knowledge, experience. And I'd love to just tap into that a little bit more yeah. if you want to go on that journey of how did that all come to be? Yes. <laughs> 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 You're like, do you have six hours to tell my exactly. life story? <laughs> oh, now I've I've got it down. Great. Um, but yeah, so I when I went to call uh, high school, actually, I was sort of interested in theater after doing band, and my friends started homeschooling, and so I, you know, basically switched from the band friends mm -hmm. to the theater friends. Um, while also doing many sports activities. And so I was playing all of these sports and I slowly quit them one by one okay. uh, because I just loved theater so much and I needed, I wanted to give myself more time to do that. And I really like, without knowing it, was stage managing in a way that people actually stage manage because I didn't have any guidance as far mm. as like, here's a book about stage managing and and or like, here's this older student who was stage managing and this is how they did it. Mm -hmm. I had none of that. So kind of like figuring it out on my own and making these little diagrams with like circles and initials of like which students were standing where, all of that. Um, and then in college, Wait, so I, pause for a second. Were you yeah, on yeah. the acting side at all? Or were you just like you came into the theater yes. world and you were like, oh, no, no, actually, I'm really great at making cards. <laughs> I I was a part of the acting world in that I wanted to like do something, uh -huh. but not in a way that was like, I am good at acting. And okay. I think I'm, you know, yeah. I didn't have that bone. <laughs> okay. I was like, they were like, yeah, you look like your sister. So like you guys can be twins in anything goes and run around the ship together and like tap dance. And I'm like, yes, yeah. <laughs> I can move my feet and look like a twin. Amazing. Wow. Um, so I did audition for a couple of things, but not so much with the intention of 
I want to be on stage, but more with the intention of I want to be with my friends and have fun. Yeah, the community part. Mm -hmm. But I really identified with like being the house manager or something, which I could do while I was also doing sports. Um, but, you know, I then like as I quit volleyball, I gave myself a semester to be a part of a show. And so the first job that I did backstage was for Little Shop of Horrors. And my one of my primary jobs was to look at this clock from the back and, you know, like turn the thing just enough so that when she said, Seymour, look at six o'clock, oh it was six o'clock. So I made this big spreadsheet of like, when during each song I would turn it and how much. Wow, and yeah, like stage manager. <laughs> stage manager was born. Cool, so you did um, all of that in high school. Mm -hmm. And then yeah. how did you know that this was like a path that actually existed? I didn't. <laughs> okay, yeah. I Because my dad is a doctor and my mom is an accountant, I was like, okay, so my options are doctor, mm -hmm. accountant, engineer, lawyer, mm -hmm. like that's it. Mm -hmm. And so I decided, you know, I want to become a nurse. And like, I really did have like a passion for it and like went on all of these like medical mission trips to like help people around the world. And I really enjoyed it. But when it came to like doing it day to day, I was like, after a year and a half of nursing school, I was like, I can't do bedpans mm -hmm. or people die. Like if I make a mathematical mistake and someone dies mm -hmm. or something like that, I can't live with myself. Yeah. And I don't want to be worried about that every single day. Mm -hmm. And I mentally just can't take that on. Um, bless the people who can. Yeah. For <laughs> and sure. uh, that's a huge thing. Um, so. I was like, I can't be a nurse, but I really liked stage managing slash assistant directing in high school. And I had only done two shows, uh, Our Town and The Music Man. Okay. And so I took my little prompt script to the chair of the department of theater and was like, I want to stage manage. And I am changing my major from wow. nursing to stage management. Where did you go or to school? Like, I went to Harding University. It's in Arkansas. Okay. Um, and it has a great nursing program mm -hmm. and it had a very small theater program. But even when I was nursing, doing nursing school, I was involved um, in the shows doing props and like basically whatever I could um, just because I did love it so much. Mm -hmm. And it was a great like sort of extracurricular thing to be doing. So you transitioned yeah. in college. I imagine you did it in like a smaller scale because they didn't have the massive theater program. <laughs> Yes, and then how you, did you would know think. Okay. <laughs> oh no, what happened? Um, they had a thirty-six hundred seat venue in college. And in college, yes, absolutely ridiculous, and a black oh. box theater. So, like, I stage managed my first thing in the black box because immediately, like, pretty much as I was walking out, being like, "I want to be a stage manager," they're like, "All of our stage managers are gone. Thank you for like." <laughs> Service, yeah. basically. <laughs> yeah. Come stage manage this thing in the black box to like prove that you know anything at all. And then like, we'll see. Wow. But my dream was to like do the homecoming musical and also do, um, they had this thing called spring sing, which was like basically a sorority fraternity show that had like 800 students in it and like doing little seven min minute numbers. It's actually very much like the Easter bonnet with okay. more people. Um, I just saw the Easter bonnet for the first time and I was like, this is insanely the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, but they would increase the budget every single year because it was such a great recruiting tool. Mm -hmm. So like they would add pyro and lasers and like all of this stuff. And so like I wanted to be a part of that. Wow. And and the homecoming musical. And they were always doing these commercial shows like Singing in the Rain, Shrek, Annie, you know, just everything that would bring someone from Arkansas into the building. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, which for me was great because they were very ambitious. They had like, you know, 38 foot turntables and like all of these things that made it challenging. Um, 
and it provided like this weirdly very applicable to Broadway experience. Yeah. So flash forward yeah. then, you graduate, <laughs> you had this experience. I imagine they were like, you were amazing. You put on this crazy huge show with a gazillion people, pyro and all. There were two key things that happened before I graduated. Okay. Sorry, it feels like I'm dragging out the story, no, but good. this is a, like, if you are a young stage manager listening to this podcast, this is the part you write down. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> tune in. <laughs> yes, tune in, Kian. Um, so my professor was like, hey, you're a great stage manager. You should go to SETC, the Southeastern Theater Conference, and interview for jobs before you graduate. And I was like, and he did this for like the entire design class. And I was like, great idea. I'm I'm there. So I interviewed for probably like 20 something places and got um, Berkshire Theater Group, which okay. was Berkshire Theater Festival. And they have several stages up in Massachusetts and it's fantastic, but it is summer stock theater. <laughs> yeah. And I really enjoyed it. It was a good experience. There was an intern there who had prior experience. And so she taught me a lot about like, and she really cared, like caring about how you mop the stage, which sounds yeah. so ridiculous, but like people notice that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and then, I was like, but I'm also doing company management things and schlepping props and costumes. And I'm basically doing the job of a production assistant. Like there's got to be more structure somewhere. Mm -hmm. So I started getting really specific about how I looked for my next internship. Okay. And this is the part you write down. <laughs> I looked in all of the playbills on playbillvault.com and found like the baby stage manager bios wow. and started writing down all of the regional theaters that stage managers on Broadway had been to and had listed in their bios. Yep. Because you write down in your bio like the ones that you either enjoyed the most or you think are the most prestigious. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know that exactly when I did it, but obviously quickly learned that there are tryouts for Broadway shows at different places around yeah. the nation. Um, and the ones when I was doing it in 2015 were Seattle Fifth Avenue, Paper Mill Playhouse, and La Jolla Playhouse. Those were okay. like the top three most frequented from my little spreadsheet. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And so I only applied to those for my last internship and I say last internship because I was supposed to graduate in May, right? But because I had done the nursing thing and switched majors, I sort of had this choice, especially with my business management minor, um, that I could either like extend my hours and have like another summer in between and graduate in December, mm -hmm. or I could cram it all in and graduate on time in May. Okay. And um, for those who aren't watching on YouTube, I said that in air quotes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so this extra summer, I only applied to those three places and I got La Jolla Playhouse where they were doing this little show called Come From Away. Wow. And I had no idea what Come From Away was or why it was a world premiere mm -hmm. or what that meant or that there would be Broadway people there. I had no clue. <laughs> wow. Yeah. All I knew was that that was a place that people on Broadway had been. Um, so I showed up. I started Googling the people who were in the room and I was like, oh my gosh, like all of the actors, except for two people who were local to San Diego, were from New York. Mm -hmm. All of the designers, including the rest in peace, Howell Binkley, the lighting mm -hmm. designer who I nerded out with so much because I was like such a lighting nerd in college. Yeah. Um, and it was the sweetest thing. And like, I had no idea that he was a Tony Award winning lighting designer. And I was just like interested in lighting and he mm -hmm. was the sweetest man. Um, and I did think, so like Martha Donaldson was the production stage manager of the show at, at La Jolla. And she and I got along well, but 
it was because when I first went to La Jolla, they gave me this like list of stuff that I was supposed to learn and presented it as an educational internship. And I was like, great. Like, I'm going to learn so much. Yeah. No one checked in about it. <laughs> wow. And I was like, okay, something's a little weird here, but like, I'm just happy to be in the room. Yeah. And so I noticed a little bit of like, why is this girl here from Martha? Um, and I hope she listens to this someday. <laughs> um, and because of this, I was like, I got to say something because like these people aren't checking in with me and like, I just need to say something. Yeah. And so I talked to her at lunch one day and was like, hey, like this is an educational internship and they gave me this weird little list of stuff that I have to learn, but no one's checked in. Mm -hmm. Cool. I don't really care. I'm just here to learn from you. Yeah. And to support you and the team in whatever way that I can. And I'm loving this process and I'm loving this show and I just want to learn from you. And she Aww. was like, she's like, you're so thank cute. You. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> How sweet. She, yeah. <laughs> yeah. She was like, well, thank you for saying something because like I got an email like two days before you showed up and they sort of just like threw you on my plate. And I was like, ah, cool. mm -hmm. great, great. Yeah. And so from there on out, it was like we had this open dialogue and like, was able to talk more about like, this is what you should do. This is what you shouldn't like. She understood more where I was coming from mm -hmm. and I understood where she was coming from. So like breaking that was like yeah. the, <laughs> the best thing that could have happened. Yeah. And I didn't know what this was called um, previously, but now I know that it's called user experience. Mm -hmm. I really care about user experience. In well, a talk way to me about weird. what that means for you. What is a yes. user experience? So for me, it's care. Mm -hmm. And I really cared about the way that like the coffee was organized. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. That like the things were laid out in the right order so that people had a smooth experience when they went to get coffee yeah. or like the, we had two rehearsal studios going. So I would like make sure that the other one was set up with paper towels and water pitchers and cups and pencils sharpened and highlighters and like everything laid out at music stands, you know, so that people could just walk in, plop down and create the thing. Yeah. And I would like prep one while the other was running. And then when they'd switch, I'd go and immediately like clean the other room and like set it up for the next thing. And like that was my sort of way of being mm -hmm. in the internship and just like making sure that the Ricola was always built. Like, you know, <laughs> just the little things yeah. that like no one wants to deal with, but then they're like so happy it's there when yeah. it's done without being asked. Yeah. Um, And so that... I think along with some other things, I was such a nerd and like really knew how to use like Microsoft Word and Excel and like stuff like that. Yeah. Um, but by the end of the internship, after I had like watched Martha call so many shows and I had, you know, gotten to shadow the deck stage managers and stuff, um, because on the team, it was Martha, who was the production stage manager. And then there was a local ASM from San Diego, mm -hmm. a local PA, a UCSD grad student for stage management, and then me, yeah. <laughs> you know? Um, and at the end of the internship, Martha was like, come to breakfast with me. And so I did. And then she was like, I want you to come to New York and work with me on wow. Broadway. Wow. And I was like, yeah. Yeah. Great. Yes. <laughs> yes. And what show did she bring you to? Um, she was going to do two shows with Eva Van Hova, mm -hmm. A View from the Bridge, and The Crucible on Broadway. And I was going to graduate in December 2015. So I was not available for A View from the Bridge, but I was available for The Crucible. And she was like, you can be either the intern or the production assistant. I don't know yet. <laughs> Great. And I was like, whatever, like mm -hmm. I am there. I'm so yeah. there. And I was able to sort of afford this be and like my parents are always like, 
include that in the story. <laughs> uh, I was able to afford this because one of my professor staff people at school and college was like, I'm going to go teach abroad with my husband, but while I'm gone, would you like to stay at my house, take care of my dog and basically do the producing side of my job because wow. she also did recruiting. And I was like, yes, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> I, will, I will do that. So I got paid and I used her office and was like scheduling production stuff and doing sort of some, uh, some mix of like, producing and production stage managing yeah and casting and you know scheduling in college is like the absolute worst thing um <laughs> but doing all of that getting paid and knowing that i had this either internship or production assistant thing coming up in new york before we even jump into your new yeah. york situation and like how it is i'm curious for those listening how you would define the responsibilities of a stage manager, because yeah. I think that's something that feels somewhat elusive and also dependent upon budget and dependent upon like how many other people are working alongside in this department. But yes. for you, what is it to be a stage manager? So I feel like there are two very like tangible sides to that yeah. question. Um, on the one hand, there's the practical, and on the one hand, there's the metaphorical slash what's my vibe. Mm -hmm. um, and so on the practical side, you know, traditionally you have a production stage manager, a stage manager, an assistant stage manager, and production assistants. And the number of those people can vary based on production to production, depending on the contract and depending on the needs of the show. Yeah. Um, and basically what the producer is willing to pay for. Um, so for a musical on Broadway, it's a production stage man. It's three people, basically. Mm -hmm. For a play, it's two people. And then beyond that, there are production assistants. Um, and these days, no interns because production assistants are paid hourly. And that's the whole thing. Yeah. Um, but it's very structured in a way. Um, but I really appreciate the way that Justin Scribner, who I work with now, mm -hmm. breaks down the hierarchy of it and like just treats it as a team. Yeah. Um, cause some of those situations can be very like black and white and like, you're doing this, I'm doing that, which is very helpful. Um, but overall, like having that team dynamic and like, we're all pitching in and doing this thing together is For like sure. at the end of the day, what the child in our heart is wanting to do. Yeah. Um, but from like rehearsal yeah. to production itself, right? So like if I were starting yeah. in a rehearsal process with you and you were the production stage manager, so like the top of the rung in essence versus, yes. you know, below, what exactly are your responsibilities? Um, primarily, a production stage manager is working on scheduling. Mm -hmm. That is the, the big number one thing is scheduling, um, working with the director, the, the GMs, the producer, the production manager. Um, designers, everyone to make sure that scheduling is happening. Mm -hmm. um, a production manager will take care of uh, much of the design stuff and like when the designs are due, et cetera. But the acting side of it and the when are we doing rehearsals and when are we, you know, making sure that we're ready for this person to go into this show, that yeah. is all the production stage manager, um, you know, in tandem with the people that we're working with. Um, and then besides that, they're also, depending on the production stage manager in the show, working on blocking. Mm -hmm. um, but a lot of times nowadays we use videos or we use stage right or an associate director is using stage right or, or an associate choreographer is using stage right. Um, which is a, which is a um, program. A program. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, are you sitting there then and you are marking up a, like a master script? Are you, you know, are you delegating that to the assistant stage manager to do that part? Like yeah. if you were running it, what would you yeah. be doing? Um, it really depends on who is doing it. But if I were doing it, I would be writing down the blocking and mm -hmm. like when a phone rings and like things that basically the director is saying in rehearsal that would need to be translated to a designer mm -hmm. um, in order to like 
put up the show and or answer questions when an actor is like, I forgot when I enter, you know, and the assistant stage managers are traditionally like writing down like what props they are carrying and like where the props tracking is throughout the show and also like costume pieces and things like that. And the production stage manager is also doing a lot of emailing. Got it. And then once you are in, you know, obviously we're we're like scooching through all these processes, knowing there's a lot of details, obviously. Yes. But, you know, like once there's a show that's up, what are you doing in terms of like running rehearsals for put-ins, for swings, for understudies? What about once the show is actually running itself? What are you doing? All of those things. Mm -hmm. So um, for instance, right now on Parade, we have many, many actors and we have many, many understudies covering those many, many actors. Mm -hmm. And so we have traditionally like a couple of days of like study a hall slash get on the stage and touch things for the first time. And then we have a stumble through, a work through, and then um, like as much as we can, a run, and then a put in with all show elements. So as the production stage manager, you are primarily in the house noting the actors on things because you know the intention that the director set behind something Mm -hmm. and working with the associate director to like make sure that all the notes get passed on and things like that. Or if somebody wasn't standing in the wrong spot, they're supposed to be on four instead of six or whatever. And then the assistant stage managers are the ones who are running the deck or calling the put-in itself, um, the cues for the put-in. and helping the actors if they have questions about like what do i enter with here or like how does this little camera open or whatever (laughs) yeah well because i think people don't necessarily realize myself included when i first started out how really the integrity of a show is held by the stage management team once the entire design team leaves. I think that oh, yeah. for me was the thing that was most shocking was like, oh, right. Like, oh yeah, there's a director, there's a choreographer, there's like the music director, like all these people that like the creative part, you're like, oh, they created what this show is. Yeah, but who's mm-hmm. running it once they leave? Yes. And so that misnomer that like, oh, like stage management is just like, oh, you're just like calling stuff and you're sending out an email. It's like, actually, no. the integrity of this show <laughs> is kept, hopefully, by yes. the stage management team who is continuing yeah. to run and and cultivate the vision that was first conceived. 100%. And I've recently learned <laughs> that when you encounter, we'll say, larger institutions, in air quotes, <laughs> um, <laughs> that that dynamic can change drastically. In what way? So, you can have resident directors and resident choreographers and resident dance captains and Mm -hmm. things like that that are all of a sudden in charge of this little nutshell of what the actor is doing on stage and only giving notes on a specific thing. Um, And in my humble opinion, like it doesn't work very well. Mm -hmm. It's so siloed and everything's so separate. Yes. Mm -hmm. And the way that the stage manager then becomes detached from the show is unhealthy. In what way? Um, Because you are not – like many stage managers, production stage managers, use that opportunity with notes to also check in with the actor Mm -hmm. and make it a moment of care. Mm -hmm. Um, And – as well as like, you know, hey, I noticed that you're speeding up here or slowing down here or that you've drifted to this side of the stage or like something. Mm -hmm. And like, there might be a reason for that. There might not be, but the stage manager has so much knowledge about all of the things that are happening on the stage, whether it's the lighting, the costumes, the thing that the other actor is doing that has nothing to do with the dance move Mm -hmm. or something like that, that's like, the stage manager's all-encompassing knowledge is so much more helpful in those noting moments than, you know, (laughs) yeah, the siloed (laughs) little thing. Mm -hmm. Siloed person that, bless them, like doesn't know anything about the lighting or like whatever. And so, yeah, I've experienced both and I definitely (laughs) – 
have a preference. Yeah. Um, but I see how you have to get to that spot too when you're building something so big, you right. know? I think it's I think it's so for me, the thing about stage management that I know I would not be great at is the insane precision with like the detail and the management and arguably again the spreadsheets that you know is like that's like really not where I go to thrive but mm -hmm. there is the creative part that I think gets lost with so many folks when they're thinking about like oh well stage managing is really just like a managerial role in essence where you're just like overseeing the stuff and forgetting the fact that as you were just talking about there is the creative integrity and also being able yeah. to communicate between because, and let's be reminding of the fact that like stage managers are in Actors Equity Association. Like yes. we have our feelings about the union, but you are still represented by the actor union as in right. you are communicating with the actors in addition to the creative team, in addition to production, in addition to general management, you are this middle person who mm -hmm. is connected to all of the elements and arguably the glue that hopefully if you're doing your job well is like keeping it all functioning and every single ball up in the air. Um, yeah. So for me, there's this misnomer and like probably why I have you here to talk about it that like, <laughs> oh, well, the stage manager, I mean, yes, there's many different breeds of stage managers, yes. of course, were, and they run the gamut of emotional availability, I'd say, or, you know, user yep. care, as you were talking about, like, what, what was the word that you use? Um, user experience, right, but it is care. Experience. Yeah, which yeah. is care, you know, it runs the gamut for sure. But the possibility for the stage manager to really hold all of that, to have mm -hmm. that managerial background, to be able to keep things really organized and also functioning without you even really noticing what they're doing and being able to be that liaison when things go wrong, the confidant, if you need to have somebody to support you. Um, you know, yeah. for me, I think that's something that many people don't necessarily know about the stage manager role. And I'd love to like talk about that part of things for you. Yes. Um, so I would definitely say like, I am learning more and more about that aspect of the role every single day. Mm -hmm. Um, because this is only my parade is only my second time sort of being the stage manager on contract from the beginning. Okay. So I am very much developing those muscles because I, I have the muscles of like, building a show from nothing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I have the muscles of like doing the readings and the workshops and also doing the off-Broadway shows where you do use a lot of those care muscles, but often those processes are so condensed to, mm -hmm. you know, two or three months off-Broadway um, that like you don't have as much of a chance to get into the routine of that day-to-day -day care. Um, so on parade, I'm very much experiencing that in some ways it feels for the first time because the other show that I worked on was A Christmas Carol with Jefferson Mays, mm -hmm. who is the most amazing, um, but it was a one man show. Yeah. And, you know, we had a very small company of the most wonderful, joyful humans mm -hmm. and less, less emotional stuff to deal with because mm -hmm. of the content of the show, whereas mm -hmm. parade is like, yeah the heaviest, <laughs> yeah. you know, very difficult content to deal with, but also allows for the most care. Mm -hmm. um, and so on Parade, we've had, and I will relate this to exactly what I do, but um, on Parade, we've had a sensitivity specialist um, and James who has so lovingly like created affinity groups for our Jewish and black and white company members mm -hmm. and created spaces where they can voice like what is upsetting to them about the show. Mm -hmm. And in some cases it's very obvious and like they talk about, you know, everything. And in other cases, like there are things that are triggering to some people and not to others. Mm -hmm. And it's so important to get that out mm -hmm. and, and, but in a safe space where it can be held and not yeah. pushed aside. Yeah. And so when we've used, you know, disturbing things, and I'm going to say a couple of possibly triggering words, but when we use a noose, 
we mm-hmm. call it a rope or a necklace. Mm-hmm. And we took like 45 minutes to talk about it yeah. and why we're using it and what anyone in the company wanted to share. And it led to some really great conversations, but it was also like just, I think everyone in the room was like, this is the most you know, intentional Mm -hmm. space that I've been in as a theater person in a long time. And it was such a beautiful thing. So as a stage manager, part of my role in that um, was to basically like support the director in holding that space. Mm -hmm. So whether it was like a big thing or a little thing, like closing the door or making sure that all of the actors were present for it, or like, you know, having the prop or making sure that we didn't see the prop before that moment or something like that, like little things that you wouldn't think about as someone in the room necessarily, Mm -hmm. but that would have made a difference, you know? I don't know. (laughs) No, you do know. I mean, I think you're talking about it obviously on a larger scale because we're talking about it from a Broadway show with a larger budget and, you know, um, a very topical one at that. But I think, you know, there is an intentionality about certain creative teams and arguably certain stage managers who've been in these types of rooms who are really trying Mm -hmm. to cultivate more safety and more care for hopefully less harm (laughs) to be had by anybody. Um, You know, I think it's harder, obviously, when you are dealing with less budget, when you are dealing with um, smaller spaces, as you were saying, shorter runs, you know, because time is of the essence and you want to, you know, you only have so much of it and, you know, you want to get the thing done. But I'm curious for you in these smaller rooms that you were in or these developments or these readings and workshops, like what are some of the things and practices that you find for yourself are things that you do consistently while you are in the role that you are in, no matter what the shape of the actual production is? So I fortunately have had the opportunity to like discuss this in an open forum Mm -hmm. of sorts uh, with Justin and teaching at Columbia. And there's a lot of language around um, how to stage manage versus how you stage manage. Yes. Great. Let's talk about it. Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> so I have really identified with like bringing in care and love and just trying to like find ways to make the moment not about the thing that we're doing, but about how we're doing it, mm-hmm. you know, and whether that's through like pulling someone aside and like having a conversation about what we're about to do or just treating people like normal human beings and Mm -hmm. not like a weird actor like fragile thing that's about to break yeah you know what i mean yeah um people can be empowered or disempowered by the way that you interact with them Mm -hmm. and just seeing that day to day in how you speak to people, how you treat them with respect, how you enter the room, Mm -hmm. how you interact with them is so like, there's such a spectrum of it. Um, But sort of like changing what you do to like, see how that affects things is how I've learned to bring more care into the room, if that makes sense. So you're just, you're adapting according to the room that you're Mm -hmm. in. You're not just like, this is how I do it and what I do, and I only do it this way. You're recognizing that humans are humans and we're not all the same. And the room is also going to have its own energy. And if you were to operate the same exact way every single time, you're arguably not doing a service to the actual creation. 100%. Like Mm -hmm. the the range of difference in a room based on the energies that are there is wild. Mm -hmm. Like the most obvious being like, if you have children on the show versus not having children on the show, like how does your, your language, your energy adapt to that situation? And you know, how do you make them feel a part of something amazing versus how do you make adults feel like they're mm-hmm. a part of something amazing? Like it's a different. Yeah. That is a totally different show. <laughs> yeah. yeah, for sure. Yeah. 
obviously you're newer towards, you know, the larger scale shows generally, but when it comes to actually running the show, do you have a preference to like calling, to being on the deck, to like, what is your preference? And also just maybe doubling back to kind of delineate who actually, once we're in the run, who is doing what on a deck? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so at my preference is to not do the same thing every okay. show. <laughs> yeah. Um, for Parade and for the majority of Broadway shows, everyone in the office does everything. Mm -hmm. So everyone calls, everyone can run the deck, uh, but the production stage manager obviously is probably not running the deck mm -hmm. um, so that they can have another office show because usually you try to have an office show uh, so that you can actually get some stuff done during the day, mm -hmm. um, during your work hours. And so everyone is doing everything, but that changes slowly as you go through the process. So like when you're in rehearsal, obviously no one's calling the show. Mm -hmm. When you go into tech, the production stage manager is working with the designers and director and everyone to create the call script and to tech the show and decide where every cue is placed, et cetera. Mm -hmm. um, and then the, as the stage manager, I've learned this is probably one of my favorite things about being the stage manager, is that I start out knowing the deck and, you know, talking to the crew and like helping them learn the show. And then I very quickly transition into calling the show mm -hmm. um, and learning to call the show. And the ASM stays on the deck a little bit longer as we go through previews. Mm -hmm. But then once the stage manager is calling, the assistant stage manager learns to call. And before you know it, we're like doing a merry-go-round dance of yeah. like calling office and deck. Yeah. And I love switching it up just so that you don't get bored with anything mm -hmm. or that you have fresh eyes on something. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, I know that they did that um, with my um, stage management team on Band's Visit. Mm -hmm. um, yes. And it was also fun as an actor to be able to interact on the deck every night a little bit differently too. Obviously, like you're not trying to like yeah. interrupt a person who's calling the show. But, you know, it's like sometimes you <laughs> get to hang out with different – like the different stage managers depending on what they were doing that night. And it always yes. changed the way that you're – backstage routine would go as well. Um, so yes. it's not just for you all too. It's just for anybody who is backstage, who is doing the show itself. Um, it changes the energy of the way the show is called and, you know, like who is giving you a half hour and like, how are they, yes. you know, announcing that over the loudspeaker and getting you pumped to put your makeup on and getting on stage. Um, yes. So it really all, it really all shifts. I'm curious, obviously your your trajectory was was different than I think so many people think it might be for stage management, you know, coming A, from nursing and B, from a school that is very different than many people's. Are there mm -hmm. things that you wish you had known earlier? Are there things that you feel as you are now, you know, in a teaching capacity, but also um, having done this for longer that you you feel like this is a shorthand that everyone should know if they're thinking of going into stage management, anything that you feel is important in that? I am just impressed by the way that like now stage managing and the concept of stage managing is so much more accessible than it used mm -hmm. to be mm -hmm. um, because of the number of people posting about it online, because of the number of YouTube videos about how to format a script or mm -hmm what spike tape is or something. Mm -hmm. um, there's so much more than there used to be. Yeah. Um, I personally like read five different stage management books in college to like help a professor figure out if he was still using like a relevant one for class, but also like <laughs> I love that. also learning, yeah. um, you know, and and hearing the different voices and like intentionalities behind people and how they stage managed. Mm -hmm. um, and so I would say like there's not a specific shorthand um, that is readily like written out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So it's important to, because that's not written out, 
to ask people about their experiences, to ask people about where they came from and how they got into stage management and how they stage manage. Um, because everyone is going to do it differently mm -hmm. and everyone is going to have a different vibe and some vibes you are not going to like jam with as much yeah. as you are others. And it's important to find those people that you're like, yes. Mm -hmm. And I want to embody that. Mm -hmm. And like, you know, this person is doing this thing really well. This person is doing this thing really well. I'm going to learn both ways and, you know, become the best version of those things as best I can. How do you um, find those people? I mean, obviously, you know, as an actor, it's like, cool, here's my listings on Playbill and Actors Ac yeah. Access and, oh, you know, like whatever. But like for stage managers, where are you finding your people besides doing what you did of like rummaging through the different the Playbills Playbill. and seeing who is working and asking for yeah. coffee? Yeah. I mean, I literally like did take like those names and like mm -hmm. also Facebook stalk them to mm -hmm. like see, you know, who they were, know their face so that when I did get to New York, like I had some idea of like uh, who I was going to be interacting with. Um, and by doing that, like I knew so many people's names before they before we met and I knew sort of their backgrounds. So it gave me a sort of springboard for conversations in many yeah. ways. Yeah. So like if I got invited to a little stage management gathering, like I already knew, you know, <laughs> yeah, a little enough to like have a conversation. Um, so I think that that really springboarded me in many ways, but also Instagram is real and like mm -hmm. you can DM people. Many people will go out to coffee with you or do a Zoom interview and they want to share their experiences. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, but sending cold resumes for me personally is like, no, please like, please talk yeah. to me first. Mm -hmm. um, because I want to know who you are, mm -hmm. because so often like people get jobs not based on their resume, not based on working on this huge show or PAing this thing, but they get the job because they're fun to hang out with and not mm -hmm. fun like in a way that you need to force yourself to be something you're not, but like they are authentically themselves and they know their strengths and they know their weaknesses and they can articulate that in a way that is approachable yeah. and in a way that I can say, okay, this PA is such a nerd and like knows everything about Microsoft Word and is going to be a, a kick-ass like script PA. Yeah. So I'm going to hire them. And then I also need somebody who's really good with people. Mm -hmm. And like, it's cool that like they don't necessarily – both have the same strengths. Yeah. You know? Well, because you're building a team. From, that's the yes, whole thing too. You know, it's, you're not doing this in isolation, team. right? You're like, right. I can have the person that's really social and I can have the person that's really, really nerdy. And, you yes. know, arguably the company, the crew will kind of energetically feel that like the social one is the one that maybe they want to talk to more. Maybe they don't actually, maybe they like the fact that the Who other knows? person's more, right. Who knows? But you're giving a variety of energy that also then yeah. supports the, and balances exactly yeah exactly okay yeah. so reaching out doing your research we love um are there any tools that as a stage manager starting out you're like you must have this in your back pocket or i'd say like what is your in your metaphorical toolbox yes <laughs> <laughs> or maybe literal, um, i don't know the number of hard skills that a stage manager could have are kind of endless mm -hmm. So <laughs> yeah. I I like to tell younger stage managers, like, know something about Dropbox, you know, actually like download it to your computer mm -hmm. um, and have it on your computer and not just through a browser. Mm -hmm. um, know something about Google Docs, Google Sheets, Gmail. Mm -hmm. We have a Gmail for every single show. Mm -hmm. um, so know something about that. Uh, something about Microsoft Word and Excel, sure. just like being able to format a basic document and like, you know, creating 
even though there is so much paperwork that can be done, like that is definitely not the whole job. Mm -hmm. And if you don't resonate with some of these hard skills, then work on your soft skills. Like, you know, go out and like figure out how you can use, um, like I was using user experience. I, I found user experience because I was obsessed with apps. And I have since like figured out how that relates to care, you know, right. okay. <laughs> um, uh, because user experience, there's user experience and user interface and like the user interface is like how the little thing is laid out and oh, there's a little icon up there or like whatever. And then user experience is like how we got onto this, you know, <laughs> mm -hmm. stream yard together or whatever. And like, yeah. um, and our experience of using it. And so like I used my, basically my hobbies of like researching that to apply that to stage managing. Um, and also like you are going to do jobs that are not stage managing or don't feel like stage managing directly uh, that are applicable. So be open to those as well. Like mm -hmm. I did so much work uh, as like, a script assistant slash like making the CD booklet for Come From Away or like, you know, literally getting dry cleaning for the drummer or like, you know, just like mm -hmm. all of these weird little things. Yeah. Um, so being open to those as well. Uh, but yeah, just like seeing how you can identify with like things you love and how that applies to stage managing because it all applies. <laughs> yeah, I think that's an important thing to note, right? Because it's like it doesn't – so often we like write off the things that are our hobbies or the things that we actually enjoy yeah. as like this isn't applicable for any artist really, you know, is like, oh, well, yeah. the fact that, you know, for me, for example, like the fact that I like hiking, how is that relevant to my acting? And it's like, well, what am I doing while I'm doing this that is actually fulfilling me? It's like it's giving yeah. me time to be with myself and be in my body. It's allowing me to like center myself. It's keeping me active. It's getting me like in a in an environment that feels new and exciting so that I'm able to see wonder. Like all of these things are applicable then to yes. my actual artistry. You know, it's like any any non-actual tangible skill set is actually only going to be translatable if yes if you are open to experiencing it in that way. Um, and obviously the same thing as you were saying with stage management in terms of there's always going to hopefully be a balance of different energies and humans with needs and abilities in a room anyway. So you trying to become this ideal of what you think it is is actually not going to help you when they're building a team. Um, 100%. Yeah. I... I feel like there, you know, we could obviously have gone down the path of like, well, how do you actually mark the things and like all the technical stuff? But right. I feel like this is such a wonderful start for anybody who is even thinking about this as a tapestry of the world and how it is integral to any any show happening and functioning well. Um, and for many people yes. who are like, but I, I love being in this world and I actually, I think like, and I could in theory be on the performance end of it, but it's also like, I, I love these other things, you know, not overriding this as a possibility to be directly in relation to the thing that happens on a daily basis with the creatives and with uh -huh. the, like the organizational, um, so I just, I think it's, it's really cool um, to talk to you about it in this way. So thank you. Thank you. Yeah. As we wind down our time, is there anything that is on your heart or your mind that you wish for artists to know or hear? I will share this because it is also a message to myself. <laughs> we love those. And it's very similar to what you were just saying, but like, you don't have to be anyone specific for anyone else. Mm -hmm. Just be yourself for you and everything else will fall into place. Yeah. So like, you know, get into your hobbies, get into your what really sets you on fire and like just know that like you don't have to push yourself to do more mm -hmm. in a way to please other people. Yeah. And yeah, you can just be you. Having different people on the team with different strengths doesn't make you any less yeah. than, you know, yeah. you are exactly where you need to be 
and you are doing exactly the thing you need to be doing. I love that. I love that. For anybody who wants to work with you, hire you, be in touch with you, pick your brain a little bit, what within yeah. your boundaries are the best ways for people to reach out to you? Um, mostly through email. Um, okay. My email is on my website, uh, sarahgharris.me. Um, and Instagram, whatever. Uh, I love talking to student groups. I love talking to young stage managers and old stage managers. <laughs> uh, just, you know, what what sets us on fire um, n is such a like nerdy spot in my heart. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Thank you so much for taking time. And um, I'm really excited to continue seeing how your stage management journey continues. Thank you, Jennifer. Thank you for having me. Thank you.